Hello everyone, Sombra Interlude here. Today I'll be doing a review for Hot Toys Resident Evil 4 Sideshow Exclusive Chainsaw Ganado. Alright, the first thing I'm going to talk about on the figure is the box itself. As you can see, it has the Sideshow Exclusive logo down here on the bottom right side. Unfortunately, the sticker's kind of coming off, but really that's not a big deal. It's just, you know, more for aesthetics, I guess. In the front, the Resident Evil 4 logo, actually the 4 on the logo is embossed. It's actually, I don't know exactly sure what they use, but it, you can see it's got like kind of bulges out, it's got like a slight texture to it. In the back of the box just shows a bit about the Chainsaw Ganado, you know, prototype pictures, two pictures of the figure, and as well as that they have additional pictures of all the other figures in the Resident Evil 4 series. Like all other Hot Toys Resident Evil figures, it has the magnetic thing holding the flap in front, so you have the figure on the right, the weapons and other accessories on the left, as you can see right here, it's got a nice picture of the waterfront at Pueblo from Resident Evil 4. And for the side, top and bottom, all the same thing. This is Resident Evil 4, Ganado Chainsaw, except the side has just a big Resident Evil 4 logo. Alright, here we have a look at all of Dr. Salvador's accessories laid out. As you can see, he comes with a standard chainsaw that he used in every encounter you had in the game. It's got all sorts of nice details of blood on the blade, you know, dirt, grime. I mean, it's a chainsaw. I wouldn't expect it to be completely clean. My only complaint with this would probably be that I would have preferred that this thing actually pulled out for like a starting motion, but really it's not a big deal. As well as that, he comes with a pitchfork. Though he never actually did use this as a weapon, the Ganado villagers used it frequently as a weapon in the game. It's a very nice accessory, and it's, as you can see, it's pretty big, probably around 10 inches, 10, 11 inches long. Nice little accessory. And he also comes with a bear trap. These were used frequently throughout Resident Evil 4. They were set up as traps for Leon. It's got all sorts of nice moving parts. This can move, as well as that, this can move. It kind of feels like force control, so I'm not going to push it too much. And the trap can also close as well. So you have a nice variety of poses you can put for that accessory as well. And last, he comes with the hand axe that was, you know, used as another weapon frequently as the Ganado Villagers. Now, this was, these actually were all the accessories that came with the, the standard Chainsaw and Auto when you bought him. But what makes the Sideshow exclusive version different is that he actually comes with this double-bladed chainsaw. This was a weapon that was used by Super Salvador and the Mercenaries in the Waterworld level. It was the only place you encountered this Ganado and the only place you saw this. I think in Resident Evil 5 in Shantytown, the level, they actually have a double-bladed chainsaw laying on one of the tables. I guess it's kind of a shine to, you know, Resident Evil 4, Super Salvador. I mean, this really isn't a you know, double-bladed chainsaw, as you can clearly see. It's kind of more like two chainsaws bound together by chain, and it looks like they took a bar, you know, welded it together for an extended handle. Still, it's a very nice, very menacing-looking weapon. It was a nice accessory to include. I mean, because he wasn't even a major part of the story. He was just, you know, a little enemy in the spin-off. And for them to include something like this, it was just, it was incredibly awesome. All right, here we have the Chainsaw Ganado. To show a bit of articulation. He has a standard true type body, so he has the standard articulation you would expect. Although, as you can see, he's got like a padded fat suit, which makes posability a little bit limited. He's got the standard head joint. You know, there's no actual head. It's just like a straight-up head and the neck connecting. But it gives a pretty nice, solid range of motion. Both shoulders have the standard, you know, ball joint up and down, you know, forward and back. As well as that, he actually has a joint at the bicep so they can both twist like this. Elbows as well, double jointed, can bring them all the way back to pretty much to touch his shoulder. And as well as that, the hands are articulated, they both twist. And you can see this it up and down depending on the position of the hand peg. And also his legs are articulated, although, you know, you see he's got more addition to the padded fat suit, which makes posability in the legs a lot more limited, although the knee joint doesn't really suffer too much from this. It can actually bend all the way back to here. Same with all other, you know, double-jointed Hot Toys figures for the knee. The, well, the actually at the feet and the shoes, they've got a, actually a pretty solid range of motion, you know, left, right. It can even kind of tilt to the side a little bit if you want to have, you know, one leg out, so you can actually stand straight up. And as you can see, really, this figure has no problem standing without a base. All in all, very nice looking figure. One thing I want to note real quick about the figure is actually that these buttons on the suspenders, they do stick out a little bit, and they have a tendency of popping off, and it actually can be incredibly annoying trying to have to pop these back in. You have to either have nails or a pair of tweezers on hand in order to do it. Alright, here we have the chainsaw Ganado, just kind of set up with his double-bladed chainsaw. 
As you can see, it comes with a standard Hot Toys base with a Resident Evil 4 logo and the nameplate that says Ganado Chainsaw. Unlike the newer Hot Toys figures, he has the Waste Grip base, which connects around. I actually prefer these bases a lot more to the Crotch Grip bases, simply because they seem to add a little more stability to the figure, and you can have all sorts of interesting poses where the feet don't necessarily have to be touching the bottom of the base. As you can see here, I kind of have one foot halfway off, which, I mean, you try to get a newer Hot Toys figure to stand like that on one of them bases, and they'd most likely just tip over. Get a quick look at the head sculpt of this figure. I mean... Really, what can you say about this figure? It is what it is. It's just, you know, a guy with a sack mask on his head, but really, they did amazing work capturing it with it looking at the stitchings and everything, almost looking like real burlap. Uh, probably the best part about this head sculpt is the eyes. To me, they really captured the look of this figure in the eyes. I mean, they're just kind of dull, distant, and vacant with a slight watery look to them. I mean, it's probably about how, how you expect someone to look with a mind-altering parasite in their body. My only complaint with the head sculpt is the tips right here, they're a bit too pointy. I don't know the best way to describe almost like you got like a potato chip bag or something over his head because it's really pointy at the tips, but still, I mean, it's an amazing figure. The head sculpt is great, and that slight little problem is not enough to distract from the figure as a whole. You can even see around like the neck area, he has a kind of like tightened around, almost like he has like a drawstring or something pulling it closed around his neck. It just looks incredibly badass. As you can see... The fat suit, there's a few problems with the fat suit, as you can see on the back, you can actually see where it stops, so it kind of leaves a dent in his back, as well as the front, it's not as noticeable as the back, but if you look kind of here, where the collar of the shirt is, you can just see the standard true type up under, which has a standard, you know, thin body with the pecs, which almost looks kind of weird, but really it's not too big of a deal. One thing I want to note too is, the prototype picture of this figure, they always showed him with a trigger finger right hand, I'm glad they fixed that. I mean, I can't imagine too many people holding a chainsaw with a trigger finger. It just wouldn't be right. Alright, here we have one last look at Dr. Salvador and a little quick comparison with NECA's version of Dr. Salvador. Very good looking figure. I'd highly recommend it to anyone who's looking to add another Hot Toys piece to their collection or anyone who's looking to expand their Resident Evil collection. As far as I can tell, the prices don't really go that high on the Chainsaw Ganado at all. I mean, I think about a week or so ago I saw one on eBay sell for $40, buy it now, so there's not too much of a demand for him. He usually sells anywhere from, as I said, $40 is the cheapest I saw, up to 120 Even at that price, I mean, if you're willing to spend it, I'd recommend it, although you could probably hold out. You can still find him for, you know, pretty good deal on eBay every here and there. I mean, despite the fact he is kind of cheap nowadays, it doesn't you know, change the fact that he's a very good looking figure and a very worthy addition to any collection. Well, this concludes my review for Hot Toys Resident Evil 4 Chainsaw Ganado. Thank you very much for watching, and stay tuned for more figure reviews.